Recall that this system here has a solution if and only if these inequalities hold. In other words, each of these upper bounds is at least each of these lower bounds. So there are going to be m times n inequalities here. Now, if x does not appear on the right-hand side, then this system here will not have the variable x. And that's the idea behind fourier moskin elimination. We can actually assume that all the inequalities are greater than or equal to inequalities. So for these inequalities, we can just rewrite them as these inequalities. And this inequality can be written as this. And so essentially what we are doing is, if we are looking at this system, we are just taking all possible pairs of inequalities, one from up here and one from down here, and add them together. So for example, if I take x greater than or equal to pj, and minus x greater than or equal to minus qi, from these you can infer the inequality 0 greater than or equal to pj minus qi. And this is the mechanism that we're going to use in the description of the fourier moskin elimination. So the version of the fourier moskin elimination that we're going to look at deals with greater than or equal to inequalities. So assume that we're given a system of m inequalities of this form. We can eliminate xk by doing the following. First of all, we make sure that the coefficient of xk is 1, minus 1, or 0. And that can be accomplished by doing this. And then we form a new system of inequalities. This system will not contain the variable xk. First, we copy down all the inequalities in which the coefficient of xk is 0. In other words, inequalities in which xk does not appear. And then, we're going to form a new inequality for each pair of inequality, one with positive xk and the other one with negative xk. The new inequality is formed by adding these two inequalities. The key is that the new system will have a solution if and only if the original system does. This procedure can be applied repeatedly, so we can eliminate iteratively x1 up to xn until we get down to zero variable. So let's look at an example to see how this works. Say we want to determine if this system has a solution x1, x2, x3. Let's label these inequalities 1, 2, and 3. We're going to eliminate x1 first using the procedure described here. Notice that the coefficients of x1 are already 1, minus 1, or 0, so we don't have to perform this step. And for this, we first copy down the inequality without x1, and that's 3. And there's only one new inequality we form, and that's obtained by adding 1 and 2. That gives us minus 2x2 minus x3 greater than or equal to 2. And let's label that 4. We now proceed to eliminate x2. Notice that the coefficient of x2 here is not 1. And so we multiply this inequality by 1 half. And that will give us minus x2 minus 1 half x3 greater than or equal to 1. And the other inequality we just copy down. And now we perform this step here. So we just form a new inequality by adding 3 and 5. And that will give us 1 half x3 greater than or equal to 2. Clearly, there is a solution to this system. We can set x3 equal to 4, for example. Now, in order to get the values for x2 and x1, we need to put this value 4 back into the previous system and solve for x2. And one can easily see that x2 must be minus 3. There is no choice. And once we have a value for x2 and x3, we can substitute those values for x2 and x3 here and obtain a value for x1. And we'll get x1 equals 13. And so x1, x2, x3 equals 13 minus 3, 4 is one solution to this system. Now, if we had set x3 to some other value, we would have obtained a different solution to this system. And since there are infinitely many values that we can set to x3, this system actually has infinitely many solutions.